So one thing about being in my late 30s is I fully understand that I don't know anything about pop culture. Like, I don't know who Millie is. According to the internet, she was born in 2002, which is about the point at which my music knowledge ends. But even in my grumpy old man bubble, this got through. This was Coachella Music Festival earlier this year. And this is Millie, who's a Thai rapper. And she set the internet on fire when she did this on stage. That's right, she's eating mango sticky rice. Overnight, the Thai national dessert became a trending topic all across social media. And here in Bangkok, the dish saw a surge in popularity. Shops sold out of their inventory and lines formed down streets outside popular restaurants. But that's not a massive difference from what it's always like here. Everyone likes mango sticky rice. Like, of course, Millie would bring a bowl of it onto a California music festival stage. What, is she supposed to wait until the concert's over? Mango sticky rice is really good. And guess what? It's got a pretty interesting story too. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna head out all across Bangkok in search of the very best mango sticky rice. Find out the history of this dish and see just what it is that makes this so irresistible. Bangkok is a city of surprises, and few are more unexpected than Bang Chao, an island in the middle of the Chao Praia, the last 16 square kilometers of jungle remaining for an hour in any direction. Here, life moves slowly. This could be anywhere, any village in Southeast Asia. It's hard to believe that it's basically downtown Bangkok. And in the northeast corner of the island, along one of the few roads here wide enough for cars to pass, is what the most obsessed local foodies consider the best mango sticky rice on earth. Every morning, Mother Sway goes to the market and picks out the best mangoes from the local farms. She brings them back to her shop where she goes through them again, picking out the ones with any imperfections and slicing them, then drying them in the sun to sell in packages for about 10 cents each. Only the very best make it to her counter, where every day from early in the morning until mid-afternoon, she and her husband serve plate after plate of their specialty to locals, neighbors, and the lucky few in the know. Mango sticky rice is a simple dish. But like all Thai food, it comes down to balance. It's sticky rice, soaked then steamed, and then combined with sweetened and salted coconut milk. Then it's served with sliced ripe mango, topped with more coconut milk, and finished with toasted mung beans. With something so simple, the difference between average and transcendent comes down to the selection of the ingredients and the perfect balance in the components. The dish is an art form here. It might be the best dessert I've ever eaten. ต้องให้ถึงเครื่องค่ะใส่หมายถึงว่ากะทิใส่กะทินน้ําตาลเกลือพอเหมาะแล้วก็ทําให้มันเข้มข้นก็คือจะได้ข้าวเหนียวที่
well, it is, but it's also savory, with the salt and toasted mung beans standing out against the richness of the coconut milk. And cutting through everything is perfectly ripe mango, tangy and complex and almost umami. It's a brilliant bite of food, and simply calling it a dessert almost feels like disrespect. It's hard to come up with any other dish this simple that somehow combines not just such a wide range of tastes, but also textures. It makes you wonder what stroke of inspiration might have led someone to come up with this in the first place. There's no official canon of this dish, no agreement on the exact origins. But if we put the pieces together, the stuff we do know, we might just be able to figure it out. So the history of mango sticky rice is, is actually pretty interesting. Uh, it involves the fortuitous meeting of a lot of different dishes and ingredients. But the easiest way is to start by talking about the actual mango and sticky rice. See, sticky rice is endemic to the tropical foothills along the Mekong River between the Delta in Vietnam and the mountains in China. The stretch of land where it comes from is mostly within the country of Laos, except for this bit right here which forms the border between Laos and the region in Thailand known as Isan. Now, for this part of the video, I wanted to film at a Laotian restaurant. But in Bangkok, there are practically zero. I mean, there are three Nigerian restaurants in Bangkok, which are awesome, by the way. But somehow I can only find two places that are identified as Laotian, even though Thailand and Laos are next door neighbors. But that's actually not as crazy as it sounds, because for all intents and purposes, there's really not much difference between Lao food and Isan food. It's the same stuff from a culinary standpoint, and Isan restaurants are absolutely everywhere. If you want the real deal Lao versions, just ask for Lao style, which basically means the same thing, but knock you on your ass spicy. Anyway, Lao is the country of sticky rice. It's the national food of Lao. Lao people love this stuff. The average Laotian eats more than a pound of sticky rice every day, every day. Sticky rice has an ancient history along the Mekong. It's been part of the diet in Lao and Isan for about 5,000 years. The entire Lao and Isan food culture is based around it. Famous regional dishes are all meant to be eaten the same way. Grab a bit of sticky rice, form it into a ball and then use it to pick up or dip into whatever else you have and then eat it together. That also, by the way, applies to dessert. Lao people and most likely Thais and Isan for millennia would satisfy their sweet tooth by mixing sticky rice with fresh fruit. It could be any fruit, and obviously this is Southeast Asia, there are a lot of fruits. But a few of the most popular items to eat with sticky rice were durian and mango. This version of mango sticky rice has been recorded in Thai history for centuries. So that's it, right? Mango and sticky rice come from Lao and Isan. Well, not so fast. The Lao version was just sticky rice, that's it. No coconut milk, no toppings, no palm sugar or salt. And without that stuff, that's not this dish. So, we only had part of the story. We have the mango and the sticky rice, but who decided to start mixing the rice with coconut milk? That, most definitely, is not an ancient Lao or Isan tradition. And what about the crunch from the mung bean seeds? Just a few weeks ago on this channel, we did a video on the Mughal Empire, the Indian dynasty that spread so many dishes and spices and ingredients to Thailand, starting around the 18th century. And the 18th century is when we first find recorded history of some version of mango sticky rice, served in the Siamese imperial court. 
And it just happens that India has its own ancient rice-based dessert, which also showed up in Thailand at just the right time. So to find our second clue about the origin of mango sticky rice, we headed back to Paharat, Bangkok's Little India. So if you dig deep into the genetic history of mangoes, and what else would you do on a Saturday? You'll find that they originated in India, either here in the Tamil Nadu state, or here in the area known as Bengal, including Bangladesh. But that was a long time ago, and mangoes have been cultivated in Thailand and Laos for long enough that it's pretty much irrelevant to our story. It's the same with toasted mung bean seeds. Mung beans also originated in India and became over time a critical part of the overall diet in Thailand. I mean, good luck going at least one full day without having a handful of mung bean sprouts here. But again, they've been cultivated in Thailand for so long, about 2,000 years, that it's not a major part of our story. But this, this is. This is kheer. It's rice pudding. At its core, it's rice boiled in milk and palm sugar. And this has been served in southern India for thousands of years. Now, kheer is not exactly a direct precursor of mango sticky rice. It's packed with distinctly non-Thai tastes and ingredients like cardamom and raisins. But there are a few telltale clues here. Obviously, there's the sweet rice and milk, even though it's non-glutinous rice and dairy. And kheer has that familiar crunch, in this case from nuts like pistachios or almonds. So let's take what we already know. That around the 18th century, fruit and sticky rice from Isan and Lao had spread throughout Thailand, and traders and immigrants from India were arriving with their own sweetened rice dessert. Those are the facts. But what happened next? Did someone just all of a sudden decide to shove those dishes together like a corporate merger? Or did these two components just simply keep evolving, influences from east and west of Thailand slowly taking root? What would rice-based desserts look like in the kingdom if we could go back in time a century or two? And for that answer, we can thank two of Thailand's great rulers, King Rama II, who in the early 1800s started recording his favorite imperial Thai dishes, and Rama V, who led the country during a prosperous period in the late 19th century, when dishes from his palace began to spread to the general public. And thankfully, there are restaurants in Bangkok that serve the cuisine of the old imperial courts, time capsules that preserve and protect ancient recipes. And one of the very best is this place, Anya Authentic Thai in Ratanakosin, the old shop house district just a couple of blocks away from the king's palace. Here, they serve an embarrassment of riches of some obscure and nearly forgotten Thai imperial foods from the last few centuries. And among their desserts are these two dishes that caught our eye. First, this dish, which dates back centuries, though it's still popular today. It's banana cooked in coconut milk. There's no rice in this dessert, but otherwise the flavor is just about right. Coconut, a bit of salt, and the almost umami flavor of barely ripe bananas cooked until soft and tender. And then this one. I'd never had this before. It's sticky rice cooked in palm sugar and coconut milk, but cooked until softer than the modern version, closer to the texture of kheer. And it's served with longan, that cousin of lychee. Now, longan was a later arrival to Thailand brought from China in the mid to late 1800s. So this would not be an ancient Thai dish, nor is it Indian. Most likely, this was just one creation that sprung from the combination of flavors and ingredients from overseas, mixing with Thai, Isan, and Lao traditions. Perhaps, just like mango sticky rice. Hmm. So you'd think that for so many plates of dessert today. I'd be struggling to get through this. But to be honest, I'm not eating because the camera's wrong, <laughs> because this is really good. So again, it's easy to see the evolution here, right? Like you've got the, this has toasted sesame seeds instead of mung bean seeds on top. Um, but yeah, with the saltiness, 
coconut milk and the sticky rice it's one step away from from you know where we're where we're going It might be hard to tell by watching the video, but by this point, I was starting to struggle. I had now started my day with a spicy som tom, some grilled chicken, and six plates of dessert. I'd loosened my belt and was trying to avoid the inevitable sugar crash. But there was still one last part of the story. Just two blocks from the last restaurant, again close to the Imperial Palace, is Kor Panich. It's the oldest mango sticky rice shop in Bangkok and it's the only restaurant in the world that specializes in this dish that's listed in the Michelin Guide. The founder of this restaurant opened the doors in 1932 using a recipe she learned from her mother who was a cook in the Imperial Kitchen around the time of Rama V. Here we can taste the dish as it was when it left the palace and spread to the public. And their version is all about the mango. The mangoes selected at Kor Panich are honestly the best we had today. They're sweet and juicy and the dominant flavor of the dish, with the rice more subtle than at places like Mother Sways. So while there's obviously some conjecture, as there's no official history of the dish, what we can surmise is that starting in the late 1700s, desserts using some combination of fruit coconut milk and rice started to proliferate across Thailand, where they were brought to the imperial kitchens. There, these dishes incubated, and some of them filtered back out to the public, including this dish, brought from the King's Kitchen to this restaurant in 1932, where it caught on, spreading across Thailand, and eventually to the rest of the world, finally finding its way 90 years later to the stage at a California music festival. And that is our story of Mango Sticky Rice. Subscribe for more from OTR. I feel like I'm on the brink of a diabetic coma. <clears throat> like if I'm in, in 30 years, if I'm lying in a hospital bed with diabetes, it's today that I'm going to look back at as the day that probably put me there. <laughs> <laughs>